everyone, Amanda here from scrimpingmummy.co.uk uh, Thanks for joining me and today I'm making a card which I made several days ago and after sharing it on social media I've been asked to do a tutorial Originally I wasn't going to do one because it is what I call a bit of a wow card and these don't always transfer well onto YouTube because they can take quite a while to make so please do bear with me um, so I've cut my card base, 5 and one eighth by the full length of a um, UK standard A4 sheet of cardstock. Scored it at 5 and 7 eighths to form my card base. Um, and that is petal pink. And the stamp sets we're going to be using is Beautiful Promenade and Strong and Beautiful. Now Strong and Beautiful is not out until the 3rd of January. It's a stunning, stunning set. Beautiful sentiments, absolutely love it. Um, and I ended up sending this card to one of my Stamping Up team who I'd just promoted. Um, she worked super hard and so um, she was sent the original sample. Not this one, the original one. She was sent um, along with a, a, a reward for, for promoting. Um, so I've cut a piece for the front and I'm going to cut one for the back and they're both the same size. They're both five and three quarters by four. Four inches, which is just one eighth of an inch shorter. Uh, so it's a very small, elegant kind of increment. And then um, I'm going to adhere that with snail. Um, not in a. I didn't do a right good job there by the looks of it. <laughs> I think I slipped, <laughs> which is why wet glue sometimes is just better. Uh, my hand-eye coordination is not what it could be, but not to worry, um, we keep going and we just roll that adhesive over, it's fine. So I'm attaching that carefully to the inside, as you can see, and I am doing a voiceover on this one. I had to mute the original audio because uh, my phone rang about four times, the doorbell went, the dogs were barking, it was just an absolute train wreck. <laughs> So I'm talking and doing a voiceover. So I'm gonna what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna get the sheer old olive ribbon. It's the skinny one, I think it's uh, one eighth of an inch, I think. And I'm using putting just a few uh, like little lines of snail there just to anchor that down on the back of that card bit of that card front so that I can then um, I'm gonna wrap it around. And I'm going to wrap it around three times um, to create a pretty decorative element to this card. And I think um, this part and the flowers just made the card in the end. Um, as I say, it, I'm doing the tutorial because so many people asked for it. Um, uh, there we go, I'm telling you there. <laughs> not to pull the ribbon too tight when you're wrapping it around otherwise the card will buckle and it's not a good look so you know keep it kind of relaxed um, and I've just pressed the end of the ribbon there into the snail that I've put at the top and now I'm going to trim it um, like so with my snips which are awesome and then I'm going to just tie the three strands of ribbon together with a little off cut of the same ribbon and I'm going to just literally tie it in a knot um, and then trim the ends off. I'm going to tie my bow separately. Uh, and the bow got quite a lot of attention from the people that were commenting. And um, it, it is just a triple bow. So it's really simple. There are lots and lots of tutorials out there on YouTube on how to tie small bows. Um, look up fork bow finger bow, some people do it on an afro comb, um, I've got a little tiny plastic um, bow maker which is like pegs that you move, really simple, um, I did try and video doing it and it just, as I predicted, I couldn't do it um, <laughs> to order as it were, <laughs> so I skipped that bit out, so here I am, I've done my bow and I'm just trimming them tails very very short, I don't even want tails showing, and then I'm going to attach that to my card with a glue dot. 
I wasn't even going to do any more tutorials really over Christmas, but um, as I say, quite a lot of people did ask, and it, it was demonstrators that were asking, not customers. Um, but you know, I'll, I'll, if anybody asks, I'll, I'll do what I can to help. Um, whoever they are, it's not uh, all about um, trying to sell products when you're a Stampin' Up! demonstrator, it's about sharing and inspiring everybody. And I, and I genuinely do believe that, which is why I <laughs> spent an hour making this video, editing it and voiceovering it. Um, because, it, it, you know, ladies wanted to see how I did it. So there we go. I will, I will say again, though, that this card is slightly different from my original. You can never make two cards exactly the same. Never. There's always some element that's going to be different. Um, unless you are just simply stamping and using a precision stamp tool, then you can um, get things exactly right. But I don't believe in perfection in crafting. I think it's kind of like, it's just not necessary. So I'm using this um, adhesive from my stash. It is non-stamping up and it's because it's slightly stronger. Um, they took fast views away which is a big shame so there we go don't ask me where i got it from because i won't tell you <laughs> as stamping up demonstrators there's a big myth out there that we're not allowed to use other products it's garbage let me clear that myth up we are allowed to use other products and we're just not allowed to promote them or send you off to competitive shops but we can use what we want there's absolutely no um, restrictions on us that's why I love being a stamping up demonstrator I am independent and stamping up give us the freedom to be independent so if somebody tells you that stamping up demonstrators can't use other products they're talking garbage <laughs> don't always believe what you hear um, right so I've got some petal promenade which is beautiful paper um, and I'm I'm ripping it. I, I love the shabby look. I love the unevenness and the unpredictability. I don't necessarily always want clean, straight, boring lines. Is basically the reason for that. I'm going to attach that directly to my card front. And then for a softer look, and I'm really enjoying um, using vellum at the moment. I'm going to overlay some vellum, and I'm going to rip that and tear that so it's uneven as well. And I love this. I've done it on a few cards recently, and I love see how it like gives that paper. It tones the colours down, and it gives it a dreamy, romantic look. Um, and I think I really do like it. And again, I'm not measuring it. I'm not cutting it. Neat like I'm just gonna rip it and vellum rips lovely. Um it's it's quite easy to um keep under control. Um and, and I absolutely I do like the look that you get with vellum. It's quite inexpensive for the amount that you get in a pack, to be honest, and it goes a long, long way. Um so there you go. Just trimming it, making it a little bit kind of even. Um although I want uneven, but I want even uneven. <laughs> there we go. I don't want it to protrude too far is the is the reason that I'm just trimming it a little bit. Okay. Sometimes vellum can be difficult to glue. Um, I try not to worry about it. I'm just going to stick some adhesive on it because I'm going to cover over with flowers anyway. So I'm just putting two very small lines of that adhesive there which dries clear you can't see it anyway so i'm not going to worry too much there we go and i'm going to stick things over it anyway so you're not going to see that adhesive i think it, i think it's just a lovely look and it's a nice way if you think that you've got a lot of space on a card just use a small strip of dsp and it helps you fill that space I don't know what I'm doing with my hands there. I think I think that I'm Italian. So I think now we're going to do some stamping. Yay. So I'm going to stamp um, the beautiful flower. Now, when I originally got this set, 
Um, I didn't like it. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't like it. And I was like, hmm, I don't like it. I'm not keen on the sentiments. But then once I inked them up, I absolutely fell in love with this set. It's beautiful. The flowers are stunning. The leaves are beautiful. It's just a beautiful, beautiful set. And I think it's very underused and very underrated. Um, so I'm using Blushing Bride here, which is a nice, subtle, soft colour. I love it. And then I'm going to stamp quite a lot of the leaves. I'm going to use quite a lot. And I'm using Old Olive because um, I know that it coordinates nicely with the DSP. So I think I end up stamping about seven of these, if my memory serves me right. Um, yeah, I think so. Yeah, mount that to a smaller block. And these are photopolymer, so the beauty of photopolymer. And the biggest and best thing about it is that you can see what you're doing. You can see exactly where you're putting that stamp. Um, you know, you can see the position of it. You can see through the block. You can see through the stamp. And that, you know, that is just going to make your stamping a whole lot easier. Because you can predict exactly where that's going to land. Even though I'm not specifically stamping straight onto a card, um, I can see where I'm stamping and I can see for the spacing, so I'm not going to waste any of my cardstock. They're beautiful. I love the shape of these. They almost look curved already before you've even cut them and done anything. So then I'm going to take my snips and I'm going to be fussy cutting them. But before I do that, I'm going to create the sentiment. And I'm creating my own frame for the sentiment, a stamped frame using this beautiful stamp here, which is like half a rectangle. And it, again, because it's photopolymer, you can see exactly what you're doing. It's brilliant. You don't even necessarily need to use your stamparatus because you can see what you're doing. And it's really not difficult at all. So just put it, make sure it's straight. I'm using my grid paper as I, as I frequently do. And then stick my block over the top. I don't know what I'm counting there. Might be counting sheep. Who knows? That's the beauty of muting it and doing a voiceover. I have no idea what I was saying. <laughs> Old Olive, here we go. We're going to create this pretty frame. And this is a lovely, lovely stamp. I think I'm going to be using this stamp in some of my journals because it makes a beautiful frame. It really is pretty. Very delicate and very pretty, but still... Um, substantial enough to sort of say I'm here, I'm a frame <laughs> and there we go and then I'm going to do the sentiment inside and I'm using the beautiful um, strong and beautiful which is, I think it's meant to be a Mother's Day stamp set, but some of those sentiments are just awesome. And I, I uh, have used them for things for my team, for things for my friends. I just think it's a lovely, uplifting stamp set. Uh, and to be honest, the Mother's Day element is very minimal for me. Um, uh, and I will be using it, as I say, not for Mother's Day. <laughs> just checking that I've got that straight because I'm still getting used to sticking the new stickers on my stamps some of them aren't perfect so I am still double checking that my stamps are straight I'm not taking it for granted that I've got that sticker lined up perfectly and I've not done a bad job there it's all right um, it, things don't have to be absolutely perfect not for me I don't mind so I'm going to trim that out and then I'm going to cut everything else and get back to you. I think I do. Yeah, I'm coming back. So here we are. We've come back and I've fussy cut everything. I've put that sentiment on a piece of um, coordinating cardstock, petal pink. And I've fussy cut those leaves. I've cut seven of them and two of the flowers. So I'm obviously mounting my sentiment first, so then I can see where I'm going to put 
all my other elements. Um, so we're going to get that on first. It's hard work doing voiceovers. I feel like I feel a bit tired. <laughs> I'll have to learn to only film when the house is empty. Because <laughs> voice they're just not it's not the same, is it? <laughs> You know, moment's gone, it's past. But here we are, we're doing our sentiment. And we're going to stick that just about there. I think my original, well, I know for a fact, my original sample was slightly different. My bow was higher, my sentiment was further over, and my first flower went on the right-hand side, whereas on this one, it's going to go on the left. But never mind, it still looks really, really lovely. And now I have two of these cards. Well, I've made two because one's already gone out in the post. So this is what I did with the flowers. So I fussy cut them. They're not perfect. I didn't have the dyes. I've done it by hand. Sometimes I just think to myself, I'm not buying the dyes. And then I've got more money for stamps. It's as simple as that. I've got a Sakura um, jelly roll pen there. It's a, a, a glittered one. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ink the middle of the flower first um, I'm using the same colour I'm just inking it to get rid of some of that very vanilla and uh, add a bit of a dreamy kind of a look and then I'm going to be edgy, uh, inking all around the edges and one lady said to me oh I, you know I can't cut perfectly um, I can't fussy cut, I can't either um, and if you ink the edges, it hides a multitude of sins if you've not cut perfectly. It covers up that, you know, that edge and it covers up where you can see the, the kind of the edge of where it's very vanilla. And it, it just gives a bit more cohesion, for want of a better word. Uh, and, it, and it just makes it look lovely. You don't have to have that perfect little one-eighth of an inch border all the way around everything. You can cut right up to the stamp to image, right up to the edge of it, and then ink the edge to just make it look that bit nicer. I think that looks lovely. And then I, I'm, I'm adding a bit of shape. Um, I'm, I'm clenching it between my thumb and forefinger, and then I'm just curving the petals and then because I've inked there in the centre um, and left the, the rest kind of like very vanilla and then the edge is darker that adds to the shape as well okay there we go you can see just a very gentle shape but the inking and the and the curving just accentuates it so we're going to do the second flower exactly the same um, ink all that edges Get absolutely covered in ink when you do it. But do you know what? I love getting messy when I'm crafting. There's nothing I like better. I hate it when I turn around and my craft room's trashed. And I'm like, oh my goodness, who's done that? <laughs> but I don't mind getting ink all over me. I don't care that I've got, you know, jeans, that I've got glue on them. Because um, <laughs> we all wipe our hands down our pants. Well, I do. <laughs> So I'm using my jelly roll, which is a, a glitter one, and I'm just re-emphasising the stamen in the flower. Um, I've covered over slightly with the inking, so what I'm doing is I'm just re-emphasising, and the, each stamen's got like a little bobble on the end, so I'm doing little dots, and then I'm going to draw the lines of the, to imitate the stamen. I'm not doing them exactly, um, but I'm giving the appearance that I have, and it, it really does look beautiful in the hand with just that little bit of sparkle. Yeah, you can see it there when it's against the light. And the, that jelly pen gives me more control than, say, a wink of Stella because I'm wanting to define those exact lines rather than just add sparkle in the middle. So that's why I haven't used wink of Stella. So get yourself a glitter gel pen. They're awesome. You can get them everywhere. Go to your local station. Stamping up don't sell them, unfortunately. Um, but you know, I don't only use Stampin' Up products, I do have a huge craft room full of lots of things and I make no bones about um, using them, I don't mind. 
Um, right, so I'm just thinking where to position it now because I, I have forgotten in my head that the original sample, it was on the left hand side, <laughs> no the right hand side, I beg your pardon. But not to worry, we still end up with a lovely, lovely looking um, card. So I'm just sticking that onto there with some Tombow. Uh, and I, when I get off camera, I do stick my bow exactly where I want it with some glow dots. And I'm going to attach the second flower um, near to the top of the card there. Look. There we go. I'm just moving back into shot because... Sometimes when you're creating, you forget that you need to be within a certain uh, sort of area to stay within the camera view. So what I've done there is I'm adding stamping dimensionals underneath some of the petals. And then if you, you kind of pull the petal back with your finger um, and then attach it to the um, dimensional. And it, it really does add a little bit of... Um, well dimension to the flower it makes the petals look like they're almost padded it just looks really lovely coming along nicely so with the leaves as i said did cut seven all cut by hand and i'm just gonna shape them with my bone folder now you don't have to do this if you don't want you could put them on flat um, but, you know, I wanted this card to be a bit special and a bit of a wow card, so I did go that extra mile and shaped all of my leaves. It doesn't take long anyway, to be honest. And look at that lovely curve that you can get. That's one good thing about stamping up cardstock. You can shape it and manipulate it and you can curve it and it doesn't just tear and break in your hand. It's lovely to work with. Um, I really do enjoy shaping Stamping up cards, it, it, it's quite robust. Um, it, it's very good. So I'm just getting my little spongy. And I'm just going to flick the colour over the... <coughs> excuse me, over the very tips of the leaves. And what that does is, um, because I've curved them, and then because of the stamped image itself is helping, and then by... Inking the very, very tips, it makes those leaves look like the light's hitting them. So it makes them look even more kind of curved, um, which is lovely. I think uh, having some dimension to your cards just can only add to it. It's as simple as that. Um, now, if you're brand new to stamping, this card's not really for you. This is more for what we call the avid crafter who likes to, you know, have a bit of a play. Although you don't need a, a die-cutting machine to make this card. Just need some patience <laughs> and a good sharp pair of scissors. And the rest of it, anybody could imitate this card. It's not difficult. Okay. So we're just going to start and attach the leaves now. I've cut loads out so that I can have as many or as few as I want, tiny bit of tombow on the back, you don't need a lot, and then start and arrange them around my flowers. Um, and I, I want to have it in quite nice clusters where there's loads of leaves, so it's nice and kind of luxurious looking, so I'm not being frugal with my leaves. <laughs> um, I'm kind of like scattering those suckers everywhere. Uh, and it just, it, it really does add to the look. It just looks really pretty. And it didn't take me very long to fussy cut them. Literally, it might have taken me five minutes. Um, so it's not like you've got to sit there for hours on end cutting out things. Because you, you literally, you don't. And practice does make perfect. I, I am um, getting better at fussy cutting. I'm getting quicker. And it's because I, I'm, I'm doing it more. And I'm just practicing. It's the same as anything else. If you practice, you will get better. You can't get any worse. <laughs> it's as simple as that on the way is up. It's a, it, it's a fact. So all you need to do is just be mindful that you don't kind of like 
protrude on the out, on the outer edges of the card. The only reason being that this card will fit in a standard C6 envelope. If you start protrude, protruding outwards with your decoration, you'll have to then go and make a custom-made envelope to fit it. So that's extra work. So try and keep those leaves within the confines of the edge of the card. There we go. I'm just deciding where to put the last leaf. Do I want to put it in the space at the back or do I want to put it in the space at the bottom? <laughs> and I actually opt for the top to the side, as you can see there. <laughs> We've got a bit of a gap there, but that really does not bother me. Not every inch of the card has to be covered, and I think that's a lovely card. I hope you like it. I hope you'll give it a try, and I'll see you again soon. Have a Merry Christmas. Bye for now.